Good morning. It is Monday, October 31st. Going to take a look at the morning charts here and see what's kind of unfolded in overnight and pre-market trading here. And uh, here we've got the U.S. dollar index. It's the four-hour chart allowing us to zoom back about uh, two months. And what we're lo looking at here is simply the blue line is the SP500 and the candlestick chart is the U.S. dollar index. And you can see pretty much uh, how they move inverse to each other. You see the U.S. dollar move up. You see equities come down. Um, they sometimes will move together, but overall, usually if you see a rally in the U.S. dollar, you see a sell-off in equities. And since we've seen a, a continued pullback in the uh, U.S. dollar index, we've seen a nice long extended rally to the upside in the U.S. or sorry, in the SP 500. Now, looking at the chart as of this morning, and more or less late last night, we saw the U.S. dollar have a nice uh, jump. It is trading right at resistance, and that little bit of a jump is uh, allowing equities to pull back a little bit this morning. Not really much, considering the size of this nice move that we had up on uh, Friday, or, or more or less the second half of last week. We're seeing actually a nice controlled pullback, and I do anticipate probably see one more push higher in the equities market, and then we might see it top out and uh, actually have uh, a decent pullback somewhere down into this level down here. So we could see a pretty good pullback in the next uh, week here. Now what I want to look at is what's happening to commodities, which really haven't moved much with this jump in the dollar this morning. If you just take a quick look at the crude oil chart, crude oil continues to hold up over a pretty key uh, support zone. We've got support right here, and we had a nice breakout, and right now it's just kind of forming this little bit of a, a pennant uh, pattern, and it looks as though it still wants to go higher. So we're going to keep our eyes uh, on this chart pattern. Uh, I do like it, but it, I do feel as though the US dollar could see a pretty strong move up. And we have seen a strong move in the crude oil chart overall. So it is overbought my my uh, opinion here. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see it pull back down a little bit, uh, break this support zone, which is fine. More or less, it would come right into the middle of this congestion, which is in the middle of this noise back here in September and through this uh, congestion here that we had in early October and of course we had the breakout it's consolidating a bit but I do feel as though we're going to see it pull back into more of a support zone right here and then we could get a setup uh, to go long. Now looking at gold, gold and silver uh, had a little bit of a pullback with that jump in the dollar last night uh, nothing nothing too drastic but you can just see that sharp bar up that we had on the US dollar index gave us a sharp bar down on precious metals so silver did the same thing and we're trading down more or less uh, just above a support zone down here and it's just trying to hold up uh, this morning we'll see how things again play out but uh, I am starting to look for some uh, setups to the long side but really it's going to uh, we're going to have to see how things unfold uh, this is the first day of the week. We had a pretty strong week last week, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see some profit taking in the market. And uh, as investors kind of digest what happened through the weekend, we could see a little bit of a shakeup uh, today, and then from there we'll uh, kind of gauge what's unfolding. Taking a look at the silver chart, you can see silver. If I just zoom in, you can see it's got a, a bar down on uh, this morning or last night, I guess with the jump in the US dollar so it's just kind of hovering there again it, it looks like it looks as though it still wants to go a little bit lower and uh, that's kind of what I'm anticipating is the US dollar is going to have a little bit more of a bounce we might see a little bit of pressure this morning and uh, and we'll see how the day unfolds uh, because it is Monday and we had some pretty big news last week and usually it takes several days for the entire world the market more or less to digest any of these big decisions and figure out what they're going to do next now taking a look at bonds, we saw money move out of bonds and into stocks last week. More or less we had this breakdown of this horizontal more or less support and we're starting to get that bounce up. I pointed out that we've got a nice breakdown. If we get a nice bounce up uh, into a resistance zone somewhere up here, um, possibly even up here a little bit more, it might be a good shorting opportunity to go into bonds and we might actually see them pull back more.
but uh, again we're going to see how things kind of play out here and what the equities market is going to do the equities market is in my opinion pretty overbought and uh, I think at any time it could actually get hit pretty hard with a pullback so we got to be very cautious and of course if equities pull back we're going to see money pile into bonds into here and we'll see bond prices probably push up fairly quickly so that's kind of where we stand and uh, I don't really be, want to short bonds until we get a really really clean setup which would be somewhere up into the middle of this resistance zone and then it would be easy to set a stop just above there but there's great potential for bonds to actually continue to pull back a little bit more uh, a good opportunity to downside for bonds for shorting now taking a look at the SP500 this is the 10 minute chart I've zoomed out about a month uh, about just over a month more or less I talked about uh, pretty much somewhere right in right in here or here I talked about that we had a running correction it was kind of a concern that I had and the market had such a huge move up and really didn't have any pullback it continued to make higher highs and higher lows uh, but volatility picked up and you, I was pointing out that if we get a running correction it might just want to kind of take off without allowing uh, you know a nice pullback for any for a good entry point and that's kind of what we got we kind of got a, a breakout up into this this level we did get a nice pullback and it was actually a really nice pullback the chart was telling me that there was actually fear in the market and we had come right down into a support zone uh, unfortunately we had the uh, the euro decision coming out and I didn't want to get long and uh, the euro decision be ended up creating a huge gap the next day and that's kind of where we sit right now is a nice kind of pause in the market and we could see it move quite a bit higher for another session or so another uh, push higher but what we got to keep in mind, the SP500, we've got this great big gap window. And in futures trading, we've started to pull back. Uh, we're starting to pull back down to the top of this window. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a gap window fill. From there, we might actually see it push to a new high. And uh, I think it's going to become uh, fairly choppy here. And then eventually, we're going to see the, the equities market pull back down uh, fairly sharply, in my opinion. So that as much as I think we're going to see uh, a push higher here we could see volatility pick up we could get a gap window uh, fill and then a push to a new high and, and then we're going to start to probably see the market become very volatile and uh, it could top out so we're going to be very cautious it's not a very good trading environment uh, right now with the market right where it is it's done a lot of its move and uh, it's got some gaps and it's overbought but with gap windows so we got to be very cautious Looking at SP500 futures, you can see what's kind of unfolded through the night and this morning. <clears throat> We've got on the chart below here all these uh, volume surges. These are regular trading hours, 9.30 to 4, and then the low volume in between. That is uh, overnight and pre-market trading. So on Friday, we more or less saw the market just kind of trade sideways after it had a nice run up earlier in the week and it continues to more or less just flag down like this which is actually a bullish sign usually we'll see it head higher out of there now within that though we do have a, a gap window we've got the gap window right here so we are coming down to the top of this gap window it would be nice uh, depending how we want to play it it would be nice if we got a gap window fill could end up taking a small long position for a possible surge to a new high and then from there we'd be looking to trim profits very quickly because I think things are going to get volatile and we could see the market kind of uh, pull back uh, even to the 1180 area so there's pretty good downside if uh, we do get another get a gap fill push to a new high volatility picks up we'll probably see a move down to the 1180 but uh, we're going to let that unfold this week. See how Monday plays out as uh, investors around the world more or less digest last week's news. And we're going to uh, take it one day at a time. I also want to cover the market momentum. And what I want to look at here are stocks trading over the 20-day moving average and stocks trading over their 50-day moving average. I, I look at these uh, pretty much on a daily basis just to see where we stand. And I consider stocks trading above their 20-day moving average to be in a strong uptrend. And you can pretty much... I usually pick up uh, 
shares on any dip and you can see here we've got 91 percent of stocks trading above their 20 day moving average so if we just pull this chart up I just want to show you how overbought we are on a short-term basis just too many stocks are running up uh, too quickly and we're probably going to see some type of a pullback in the near future here if you just look at the uh, the price action here on the chart you can see we've got this rising wedge right up into the 90 zone and if you recall anything over 75 percent you have to be very cautious about a market topping out so that's kind of where we stand we've got this rising bearish wedge we might see one more push to a new high and uh, from there I think we're probably going to see a good shorting opportunity uh, that we might actually play a nice pullback in the market and then look for a long entry so that's kind of where we stand we're really at a, a tippy point here overall in the market gotta be cautious another chart I want to look at is the 50-day stocks trading above the 50-day moving average and that's by clicking this little chart here it's not quite as overbought but it is still overbought and if you just look at the chart pattern let's let this page load just look at this chart pattern you can see we've got a very similar stocks have really caused a, a drastic move to the upside it's into a rising wedge more or less and we are way overbought way above the 75 percent level again and that indicates we could get a very sharp pullback uh, in the near term which is why you don't want to be adding long even though the futures chart of the SP 500 is showing a nice bullish pattern uh, from last week and fading into this morning there is a good chance we might get one more push higher and uh, at that push higher we might actually be looking to take a quick short play because there could be a substantial move a drop down to the 50 percent level which is the kind of the norm here so that's kind of where we stand on on the market momentum one other thing I just want to point it out is the the volume and the advanced decline stocks here if we see stocks Friday we saw a pretty much neutral day it was probably pretty much even across the board but overall we've got stocks trading at a new high and very low stocks uh, a low, low number of stocks trading at new lows so this is a, a good sign overall we want to see these these uh, new highs jump over 100 on the NYSE and the NASDAQ we're going to keep our eyes on those in the next week or so we'll see how things hold up when we get if we get a pullback here and uh, and when we get a rally from that pullback then we'll see if these stocks jump over a hundred each and possibly go up to 200 300 and then we'll be actually looking that we're in another, another strong bull market but right now the market is kind of neutral Friday was just kind of treading water and uh, no, nobody really wanted to put any real money to work on Friday because it was the weekend coming and um, everybody was still kind of digesting the Euroland uh, decision of what happened there. Anyways, that's it for now and I'll talk to you in a bit. Bye-bye.